You know, folks, we have not been all that kind to Marianne Williamson uh, over the course of this campaign. But um, she, I guess, learned from her appearance on the Jimmy Dore show uh, not to go on programs that are going to make her look bad. Instead, go on programs that are going to somehow find a way to make her look good. And so she made her way to the Club Random podcast with Bill Maher where she came off looking good by comparison because of what an unbelievable prick Bill Maher has turned into uh, in his old age. Here's Bill Maher talking about how things are actually pretty good in America, and he bases that assessment on his personal experience riding around Los Angeles and America when he's out playing gigs. Here's Bill Maher talking about how actually, you know, things aren't so bad. You just ride around, you just see a country that does not look like it's falling apart. Bill. Like my eyes also matter. It matters what I read and what people tell me. It also matters that I just live in this world and I travel a lot. And you don't really no, live in this yeah. world. That, like, that's the whole point, is that Dude, your I, eyes I, are actually the worst source of information you could possibly refer to because your eyes are wired to your brain and your body, which gives you a very subjective experience of America because you're rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and I, I still don't understand, given the amount, we talked about this yesterday, I don't understand given the amount he's on the road that he could say that. The first time I ever went to New Orleans, I was hanging out in the French Quarter like all the tourists do, right? But I saw coming in all these boarded up warehouses and these clearly there had been industry in the area that was now all gone. And I had never been there before and I noticed it. I was curious about it. When I just went to Buffalo, man, it, you have all these ruins of factories, like the, the piles of bricks from where factories used to be, abandoned grain elevators. That that's I was there for five fucking days and I saw that. This dude has been traveling the country for decades as a stand-up. How could he say this? How could right. he not have seen any of that? Even, even, yeah, you're Bill Maher, you're rich, man. You're not hanging out on the rough side of town, but just, just driving in from the airport. How have you never seen this? Well, that was your first question to Jimmy Dore when we had him on the show is, hey, yep. you know, you're a stand-up comic. You travel the country. What does it look like out in the country? Because Jimmy probably lives in a nice neighborhood of L.A. too. I mean, he's a really, really talented grifter. He's the best grifter in the game. He's, he's the, the best, best right-wing grifter out there. So he's got to live in a nice area, right? I mean, why grift if you're you know, not going to live in a nice area? But when he gets out of his sort of grifter cul-de-sac, right, and he goes to these places that you said— you know, uh, it was a good question. Hey, what is it like out there? And he said, it looks like people are hurting out there. I'm surprised they have enough money to come out to the shows. Apparently, Bill Maher <laughs> doesn't see that. I don't know what kind of venues which, he plays. I, which I, I, don't, but, I, don't un yeah. I don't understand because it's not like they have a teleporter right. where you get in it and they beam you into the stadium and you don't see what's in between. How do you, how do you miss that? I was literally in Buffalo for five days and I saw the deindustrialization. You've you've been traveling the country for decades. How do you how do you miss that? It, it makes it just makes no sense. And it, I I take him at his word that he lives in some kind of cone of in, invisibility that he just doesn't see what's going on around him. I mean, he but looks that, confused. Like, you see his hands are up like this. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, it, I don't well, know. you know, it's like it's like the segment we covered. Why are people so cranky? Right. They, exactly. Things exactly. things have never been better. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, Walter, please don't do the grifter gossip shit. We're joking. We're joking. We're, jo we're, we're joking. Walter. We're joking. We're you might be we're new sick. here. I haven't seen you do a chat here before, but it's your first time here. We kid. We kid a lot here. And I'm out in the city a lot. And a lot of people are just living their best lives. And they're not, they're not all fucking rich. It's not all the top 20%. Uh, for all its horrible problems, this country still somehow... How we got through the pandemic and didn't go broke, I don't know. I mean, we probably will in the future. Maybe it's the inflation is, is part of that issue. But 
I just don't see a country where the people are just seething and unhappy when I'm out. And that has to count for something. I mean, it's just you know incredible. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it just speaks to such a shallow understanding of what poverty is and what misery is. When you see homeless people walking around on the street, are they seething angry all the time? Or, or are they crying all the time? No, most people in day-to-day -day life look like they're doing what they got to do to get to the next day, right? right? Like right. people right. aren't walking around in tears or seething mad. Just because they're, they're not walking around gritting their teeth, clenching their fists 24-7 doesn't mean they're doing well. Doesn't mean they're doing well. In fact, a lot of people without a lot of savings, without a lot of money, tend to indulge, tend to blow, you know, 50 bucks at Chili's every now and then because they figure what's the point in trying to save money anyway? We're just digging ourselves further. So right. they indulge in the sort of very, very minor pleasures of life. Just because the parking lot is full at Applebee's doesn't mean the country's doing well. Like, it's just like, what an absurd metric. Well, I don't see people breaking down in tears or throwing trash cans through the window all day. That must mean things are pretty good. Bidenomics is working. Well, look, he, he's going, he, he's going and he's walking along Venice Beach or the kinds of places he goes. And, you know, he's seeing people on roller skates, having a good time. He's seeing some, you know, LA hipsters. And to him, those are like the common people. But really, those people are pretty privileged themselves for the most part. Right. But to him, he thinks he's looking at the average people. And in terms of really poor people, that's what she actually brought up where his response was so out of tune that, you know, I said this when we were doing the post duopoly show. It, it's one of those Geraldo interviews Manson moments where Manson looked good by comparison. Exactly. It's, it's just one of those moments where he's one of the few interviewers who could have made Manson, uh, Manson mm -hmm. <laughs> could have made Marianne look good. <laughs> yep. Well, here she is. Here comes that part. Was last night, I was speaking to teenagers on Skid Row. Do you know how many people are homeless in Los Angeles County on any given night? Seventy. <laughs> if you go to Skid Row, 000. you're gonna. Okay. That's, that's my point. You say not... you drive around, but where do you drive around? Okay. You don't drive too many miles. I, of course. Why would I go to Skid Row? That's kind of my point. So you don't really. You say I don't see anybody no, going no, through that. I, that's well, right. Don't. You're not driving right. there. And most They're people don't. They're more than don't. an underclass. Yes. They're this invisibilized. <laughs> yes. I mean, feel it, absolutely incredible. Absolutely why would incredible. why would I go where poor people are and see poor people? Right. Why That's would I bear the witness point. to the kind of immiseration that I'm denying? Right. Yes. That I'm gaslighting the viewers into thinking doesn't really exist. Here's a tweet from uh, Ben Norton, and this got a lot of uh, action. Uh, this this article that was archived at Wall Street Journal. The U.S. had a record rise in homelessness in 2023, jumping up 11 percent from 2022. Biggest recorded increase since tracking began in 2007. Of course, 2007 to 2008, what happened that year? The recession, the housing mm -hmm. bubble, right? We keep hearing that the U.S. economy is supposedly doing well, but it's doing well, obviously, yes, for financial oligarchs not poor people between letting the eviction moratorium expire and letting the child tax credits expire and the post pandemic recovery not being able to catch up to pre pandemic interest rates pre pandemic mortgage rates rent rates i mean rents in the city are higher than they were pre pandemic they went down during the pandemic and now they're back up and yeah. so this was all pretty easy to anticipate the economy was sort of being propped up uh, during the pandemic, right. but there was going to be this major strain in these years, right? Um, and there is one. And this fucking buffoon sits here in his Beverly Hills, you know, man cave saying, well, you know, it looks pretty good from here. I don't and, see oh, it. you're talking about Skid Row. Well, I don't go there. I mean, what, what an unbelievable that, asshole. The, the country is doing okay as long as you delete the parts where people are not doing okay mm -hmm. and those are not the parts under discussion right. i'm talking about the parts where the real people live not where the poor people live that's the yep. underlying assumption why would i go to skid row what's he really saying well that doesn't count i'm not talking about that 
It's only a problem once it affects people outside of Skid Row. And I'm right. not seeing that. And people outside of Skid Row are disproportionately voters. That's why I've talked about over and over again. There's this real divided political reality between the electorate and the reality of what the American people are actually living through, because that's exactly what he's talking about. Well, yeah, the people are doing OK. Well, what about the people who are homeless with the people? What about the people in these horrible areas? Oh, well, I, I wasn't talking about them. I don't even think about them. Right. They, right. they don't even they don't factor count. into our politics. Really. Right. You know, that's why you have all these normie candidates continue to get reelected over and over again despite the country just absolutely crumbling. 11% increase in homelessness, that's huge. I mean, that's absolutely huge. As Ben Norton said, the biggest recorded increase. Please clap.